Hey guys, it's your girl Kia Nicole here and I'm back with my very first cooking video. This is in no way, shape or form a tutorial. This is just me showing you how I prep and cook my Sunday's dinner. Um, so just sit back and enjoy and we're gonna jump right into the video. All right, so we're gonna start off with prepping our pot roast. Now this is a chuck pot roast, which in my opinion is the best. We're gonna use Slap Your Mama. If you don't know, now you know. That's literally the best seasoning ever. We're using paprika as well. We're using garlic powder, of course. Onion powder. Seasoned salt. Black pepper, of course. Chili powder. onion soup mix some chicken broth now get reduced sodium you don't need all the extra salt and beef broth as well get reduced sodium as well now i use the browning um because i like the extra brown color and also worcestershire sauce i hope i pronounced it right some thyme of course throw it on in there and some onions of course and then some extra virgin olive oil. It doesn't have to be extra virgin, but you know, virgin olive oil. All right, now you know all the seasonings that we'll be using. Now we are going to pat our meat dry. Um, rinse it first. I didn't show you me rinsing it, but best believe I did. So rinse your meat off first, and then you're gonna pat it dry so that the seasonings can stick. Yes, you don't want them slipping off. So pat it completely dry or as dry as you can get it. Yep, I had to grab another paper towel because this is a big hunk of meat. So I wanted every crack and crevice as dry as possible so that my seasonings will stick. Now you are going to go in with your seasonings. I put mine um, inside of a small bowl and blended them all together. That just helps me with portioning just so that I don't over season it. And let me tell y'all a secret. I actually prefer my boyfriend to like season this type of meat only because he has a heavy hand. And this meat actually does require like a slightly heavy hand because it's a large piece of meat. And you may think it's heavily seasoned. Like you may think what I'm doing is a whole lot. That looks like a lot of seasoning, right? But in actuality, that's a lot of meat. So a lot of the seasoning, you know, may not completely stick when you're cooking it which is why you want to make sure it's all the way padded dry with the paper towel um but a lot of it just simply is not gonna stick so it's like you have to over season it in a way so it's gonna seem like a lot that i'm doing but believe me when you're done it's gonna be nice and see again this ain't even a tutorial this is just how i do it but yeah i do prefer my boyfriend to do it because he has a heavier hand than i do and for some reason when he does it it comes out even more seasoned than when i do it but he was out at the time so i had to go ahead and just do it and it's still gonna taste good so that's all that matters So yeah, you wanna make sure you get all into the cracks and crevices. Like literally don't leave not one piece <laughs> of meat unseasoned. Everything, you have to get all up in there. And I actually had a little bit of seasoning still left. I just put it to the side. You can simply add that. Um, you can add the rest of that on your meat if you want, or you can add it to um, the liquid that you're going to make for your roast. All right, so now I am going to put my meat in a container and I'm going to put it in the fridge for a couple hours to marinate. If you have the time, please just let your meat marinate overnight. That's what I normally do and it brings out the best flavor. Um, however, I went to bed last night and did not do it. <laughs> so I'm just gonna let it marinate for a couple hours and then we're gonna get it cooking in my crock pot. All right, it has been two hours. We are back. The meat is looking nice and marinated. We are now going to 
coat our meat with some all-purpose flour y'all don't judge my flour it's been through a whole whole lot okay but it still works flour is flour amen oh yeah yeah i forgot to mention this regard what i got on this is what i went to bed in so i'm literally <laughs> up in my night clothes i got this mario shirt on these nice comfy you know bottoms listen it is what it is i'm in the comfort of my home and that is why y'all do not see my face because i'm in a bonnet and i'm comfortable child trying to make my sunday dinner Alright, next I put some oil in my pan and I go ahead and fry, pan fry the meat. You're just searing it, you're not cooking it all the way through. So you're just searing the meat, making sure that it develops a nice golden crust or brown crust, I should say, on both sides. And you'll see what that looks like in just a second. So now I'm just flipping my meat over. I was struggling with it a little bit because... I don't know where my tongs were, so I had to use that little bitty fork. <laughs> but you see how nice and brown that turns out? That's how you want it to look. You want it to develop a nice crust because that is going to bring a lot more flavor when you put it in your crock pot and it cooks. And you're just going to do the same thing on the other side. And bam, nice and browned on the other side. So we're going to put this to the side until we're ready to use it. I am now going to use that same oil and put my onions in that pan and sear them. Um, now, this step is optional. You can simply throw your onions, raw onions, inside of um, your crock pot as well to cook with the meat. I just like to do this again. That's flavor in that pan. So I want my onions to soak up all that flavor. In my opinion, it just adds more flavor. The word of today's video is what? Flavor. And guys, I did wash my onions off before putting them in there. I just wanted to let y'all know. So if you're not washing off all your vegetables, your meat and all of that, please make sure you do so. So basically you just want them to be caramelized like so. So once they start looking a little bit like that, they got a little brown to them, you know, a little caramelized action going on. They're done. So now we are going to prepare the liquid gravy, whatever you want to call it, uh, that you will be using um, when you cook your meat in your crock pot. So I have a little chicken broth going in there. I use chicken as well as beef just because the chicken just brings, I don't know, it kind of cuts back from all that beefy flavor. Um, so I don't just do beef. But there is a lot of beef in there as well. So you see now I'm going to go in with some beef broth. And I'm going to do about like two cups of that in there. Um, so one cup of chicken, about two cups of beef. I'm not going to tell y'all all the measurements because to be honest, a lot of stuff is free-handed. <laughs> if you know, then you know. So, you know, just use your best judgment. And then I'm going in with a beef bouillon cube and I'm going to just throw it on in there. Uh huh. Then I'm going to go in with a little bit of onion powder. I think I did like what a teaspoon of that. Okay, I lied. So I put like what a teaspoon and a half or so of onion powder, but honestly guys use your best judgment if you like to use a whole bunch you can use more we're gonna go in with some garlic powder as well um i don't know how much of that i put in there and we're going in with some worcestershire <laughs> i don't know how to say that word y'all either worcestershire sauce something like that and you see i mean it's overflowing i don't even know why i'm using the little teaspoon tablespoon things because i mean it just over flooded that's okay then i'm going in with my browning liquid 
and that's just gonna add that extra brown color that I like in my um meat like I want my meat to be extra brown I want the gravy quote unquote gravy to be extra brown as well so that little, little dab little cap of it is all you need you don't need too much um if you want it to be extra 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 brown then you can do like two caps full of it or however much you want now this step is optional i just put in like a couple pieces of butter um unsalted butter that is um and i don't know why i just that's just what i do <laughs> guys i almost forgot but you're not going to use your lipton onion soup mix and also put that in your little liquid concoction and that's just it's just gonna bring a lot more flavor what i said the keyword of today's video is flavor and yes i'm going in with my plastic spoon because like i said i just use whatever is near me i have real spoons but whatever the plastic one would do all right so now we are going to put everything in this crock pot and i have the hamilton beach brand yeah y'all see me in my bonnet mm -hmm. So I just pour the liquid in there first. And you see some of it is like stuck to the glass, being stubborn. That's that Lipton onion soup mix. So I just pour a little water in there, swish it around to get the particles that are stuck to the side and put it on in there. No seasonings left behind, okay? Now I'm gonna go on with some thyme, fresh thyme if you have it, just a few sprigs of thyme. Wash it off and throw it on in there. I also forgot to mention I am using some baby carrots as well. I'm not doing the whole celery and potatoes and all that because I have quite a few sides that I'm gonna eat with the roast so I don't want it to be like too much starch. So I'm just going to do carrots and carrots is healthy. So I'll throw that in there. I'm not a huge celery fan. So I probably would never use celery to make my pot roast. Again, wash off your carrots. I didn't show you, but I did do it. Now I'm going to put my meat in there. And yeah, me and this meat had a little tussle because, you know, it just was not trying to get in that pot. But honey, you got to get in that pot. Okay. And, you know, I got my sauteed onions looking so scrumptious and then i'm extra so i am just gonna take a spoon and kind of like what's the word for it base the meat i don't know i'm just gonna like pour the liquid that's surrounding the meat on top of it as well just to make sure it's really absorbing the liquid and it's kind of you know not starting from a dry state I don't know it makes sense in my head I just do whatever feels right and then I'm going to let this slow cook for five hours on high um, you can also do eight hours on low all right so now I'm gonna show you guys how I make my macaroni um, I use chicken broth and the elbows macaroni shells and I'm putting about half the box in there although I think I did a little bit more than half um, I don't need the full box just because it's literally just me and my boyfriend probably eating it so all right so now i'm just going to show you the different cheeses that i use um i have some mild cheddar cheese i have sharp cheddar cheese and then i have two mozzarella cheeses now i sent my boyfriend to get these ingredients he claimed they didn't have no other cheeses i usually use between um three to six different cheeses um so this is what we have to work with y'all and then i have my um shredder now this i would prefer like an electric one where you're not having to do so much like elbow work to get it shredded because it doesn't really shred the entire thing or at least maybe i'm doing it wrong you'll see it doesn't shred the entire thing so i just try to get it as close as i can to like you know I, I, you'll see i can't really explain it <laughs> but you'll see what i mean so i'm shredding it and i normally like cut it in half first and it just makes it easier for me to work with and hold it in my hand.
So as you see, I'm left with these two little pieces because I was not trying to cut my hand trying to shred them. So then what I do is I kind of just cut them in blocks and that's just how I do with each piece of cheese when I'm left to like just a thin piece left. Um, I'll go ahead and just cut it into blocks and I always either put it up and save it to be used later for another time because in most cases the cheese I've shredded is enough to make the entire pan of macaroni by itself. All right, so now that my macaroni is done cooking, I just add some butter in there and I stir it up. You don't want to over stir it because it's going to be gummy. Like I probably just stirred it a little too much, but you do want the butter to kind of be like melted in there as much as it can be. I did let my macaroni cool down a little bit, so I didn't put the um, butter in when it was piping hot, but I would advise for you to do so because it'll melt the butter a lot more quickly you don't have to keep stirring it like I did so then I go in with some sour cream yes guys sour cream if you haven't tried it try it I feel like it just gives your macaroni just a different taste you're not gonna use like a lot of it just a little bit of sour cream And then I go on with some paprika. So basically you're gonna season your noodles, guys. If you don't season your noodles, try it. It's definitely gonna provide, what's the word of this video? Flavor, a lot more flavor. So you can't just rely on the cheeses alone to make your macaroni good. I advise you lightly season it. So the next season I'm using is black pepper, of course. If you're not at least doing that, then you're doing something wrong. A little garlic powder. A little onion powder and then a little sea salt I'm using sea salt um, you know it's a little more natural so I just want like a lighter salted taste like I don't need to overdo it so I'm using a little sea salt and then you just stir it all up like so I also add some of my shredded cheese inside of um, my seasoned macaroni. Uh, this is optional. This is just what I do just to help 
make it even more cheesier so you're not just putting cheese on top you have macaroni not macaroni you have cheese all the way throughout your macaroni um i think it's important to do it this way if you're not gonna take the option of like some people make a roux and you know they'll have the macaroni be like super creamy or however i don't really care to have my macaroni that way this is like the old school way and this is the way that i grew up eating it so i just add a little um cheese inside of the seasoned macaroni all right so now we are going to make the um liquid concoction <laughs> that's my favorite word um that we're gonna pour over our macaroni when we get to putting it in the pan so I use about two eggs now if you used way more macaroni shells than I did you can do about three but I use about two eggs and then I'm gonna use some whole milk Now I'm going in with my heavy cream and I think I used about one and a half cups of heavy cream and then two cups of whole milk is what I used earlier. Now I'm just whisking everything together. Um, one thing I did do that I didn't show you guys in this video, I did um, actually go back and add some more seasonings in this liquid concoction as well so I just add a little salt and pepper and I think garlic powder and that was all um, just to like what's the word again flavor hello some more flavor <laughs> I don't know it just adds you know an additional layer of flavor when I do that as well so everything's seasoned so I wanted this to be seasoned as well all right, so my oven is preheated to 350 degrees and I'm going ahead and lathering up the bottom of my pan as well as the sides with a stick of butter. The butter is, of course, unsalted butter. Um, I try to minimize as much salt as possible, especially if I'm already using seasonings that have salt in it. Um, so that's good enough. So I'm gonna now um, layer up my macaroni. So the way I do it is I put down uh, my macaroni first. I do a nice layer of that. And then um, after this, I'll actually add more cheese on top of this. So it's gonna be super, super cheesy when we're done. So now I'm going in with my shredded cheese and just layering that on this first layer of macaroni and then I'm going in with that liquid that we made and I am pouring that over the first layer and then we're just gonna repeat these steps one more time for the second layer of macaroni And then I'm extra, so for presentation, I'm gonna throw a little paprika on top. You'll see when it comes out, it looks so good with that paprika melted on top, uh-huh. And then I just put it in the oven for about 30 minutes or so. All this cooking, I needed a nice break, so I have my favorite wine here, Stella Rosa Black. And I'm gonna pour me up a glass because I need a very much needed break from all of that cooking. And then we're going to be right back at it in a few seconds. Mmm, look at that, y'all. So the macaroni is done. It looks scrumptious and tasted even more delicious. So now I'm moving on to my cabbage. And cabbage does not take long to cook, so I kind of always leave that 
close to the last um, part of me cooking because it doesn't take long. So I cut it in half, as you see here. And once it is cut in half, you see the core right there. I go ahead and cut that piece out. So I kind of just like slice around it and then I pull it out. And then I cut that in half. So I cut my half in half. So basically you're gonna cut your two cabbages into fourths basically. So you have one cabbage, you cut that in half and then cut the half in half. And then I am going to cut it. Now you cut it how you want to. I cut mine um, the long way, but then I also go back through and like cut it up into smaller pieces. I don't like long pieces of cabbage. I don't know. It, but you cut it how you want to cabbage is cabbage as long as they are um cut similarly and you don't have long pieces and short pieces and big pieces and small pieces you know so i try to cut it to where it'll kind of be as even as possible and then i almost took my finger out y'all like come on girl act like you know how to use a knife and then y'all yeah, also use bacon grease to season my cabbage so i'm gonna throw on some bacon i use like four to five pieces of bacon um and i use the grease of it and throw that in the pot with my cabbage so now i have my freshly washed cabbage all nicely cut up the size that i like and i just throw it in the pot like so and i don't care about my pot like overflowing as long as it's not to the point where it's ridiculous i just keep stuff in it y'all i know some people may like do a little bit at a time and add it but cabbage cooks down quite a bit so it's just gonna cook down anyway as long as my lid can close over it i'ma stuff that baby And then I added my bacon grease, not shown here, but I did add it. Um, and then I add like a couple slices of bacon in there as well. I'm going in with some chicken broth. Yes, chicken broth is like the goat today. Um, and then I'm adding some black pepper. Now you can season your cabbage how you want, but this is how I do it. So I use black pepper and I'm very, very generous with it as you can see. And you know you can't leave out the slap your mama. I mean, y'all, this is literally the best seasoning ever. <laughs> the best. And I'm generous with this one as well. And then I like my cabbage to be a little bit of spicy, so I add some red crushed pepper. And y'all, that's really all the seasons I use. I know you're probably like, girl, that's it. But I'm telling you, like, those three seasonings are the GOAT for me. I don't need all the extra. Like, there's no need for me to add salt because, I mean, salt is already in the slap your mama for one. Then I use bacon grease, so I'm, I'm good on the salt. So I use a little bit of sugar as well. Um, I don't know where I learned this from. I learned it from somebody who made, I was watching somebody cooking cabbage and they actually used a little bit of sugar in their cabbage. And I was like, mm, I never did that before. So I tried it and it just cuts down on the acidity, I guess, of it all. So it kind of just like brings all the flavors together and mellows it out. So it's not too acidic, 
I guess. <laughs> And this is the final result. I also made me some yams. I didn't show you guys because, I mean, it's yams. If you don't know how to make it, then oh well. But I didn't want this video to be too long. But, y'all, this food was so doggone good. Like, I'm not even going to lie to you. Don't it look good? It was very good, y'all. That's the end of my video. Thanks for watching.